Now let's look at this special bromination agent, NBS, N-bromosuccinamid. We're going to look at radical bromination. And you may notice that there is a problem that we could have. So the problem is, if we would like to brominate something with a double bond in it. Now, this position will have a resonance favored uh, situation with the double bond here. Of course, that position would be the same. Um, and so we're more likely to substitute here under radical conditions. So if we look at, let's say we actually want this to go a radical route, so we're gonna add our bromine in and we're going to make sure that we're shining a bunch of UV light on it. And we could go radical and get our desired product. However, that's not the only possible reaction, and we've already discussed one of these reactions. What would happen if we add bromine to an alkene? Well, we could get 1,2 electrophilic addition. And that's not what we would like, but it's not really avoid avoidable. And this reaction is fairly easy to perform. In fact, one of the tests, chemical tests, to see if we have an alkene or an alkyne is to add bromine into a flask that, a little bit the, into a flask that has our suspected alkene and shake it around a little bit and just see if that red color of the bromine disappears. So this reaction, the, the electrophilic addition, is quite favorable. And you'll recall that it, it happens in anti-addition. Well, what if we actually want the radical pathway? Well, there is a solution. We'll use in bromosuccinamide. And if we do that, we can perform this reaction and get our brominated alkene, so like this, in pretty good yields. And the reason why this works is this is specifically a radical initiator. And while it does generate a little bit of bromine in the solution, it is a very low concentration. And because the concentration is low, the electrophilic addition is much less likely to occur. And so let's illustrate the NBS part of the mechanism and, and we'll really focus on what's happening there because we've already discussed um, brominations when we have radicals to alkanes so uh, we really just need to focus on the NBS part and that will help us know or see what's actually happening so we initiate a radical. At this point, our radical could react with uh, our carbon starting material here. I've got to remember 
to drop from the bond there. And that will generate some HBr, so pretty strong acid here. And of course the radical um, alkane. This will go on to form, do the rest of the radical steps. Um, we're not really going to focus on that part right now. What we are going to focus on is what happens to this uh, portion right here. So we've got HBr in the solution, and HBr will react with our in bromo 6 cinnamide and during that process, we can actually generate a little bit of bromine. So since we are concerned about the bromine in the solution, we need to look at this process. So at this point, back to the double headed arrows. Now we have bromide in the solution, but this is going to be a very low amount of bromide in the solution. That's going to react with this bromine. Remember, one of the properties that we like about NBS is this nitrogen bromine bond is weak. So it's going to be easy for this bromide, which is nucleophilic, to come in take that bromine away from the nitrogen. This is going to generate a small amount of bromine, Br2. Now we have an enol, and so that will do tautomerization and end up generating this in solution, the proton there, all the nitrogen, like this. Okay, so that is the fate of the NBS. A small amount of this bromine will be generated. Slowly as the reaction progresses. So the important thing here is we're generating radicals as this goes along. And that will propagate this. And once that does, we're generating bromide uh, radicals bromine radicals. That causes the radical reaction to happen. Now we generate this alkene um, radical or alkane radical because the, the radical is on that carbon there. This can react with our bromine and that will generate another bromide radical or bromine radical and it will generate product. Now, let's look at what has to happen to form this product, to do the electrophilic addition. And let's just remind ourselves of that mechanism really quickly here. One of the key steps here is um, having bromide to come in and react. So we have Br right here. So if you recall this, I'm going over this very quickly so that this video doesn't get too long, which is probably already going to be a problem. 
So we generate this intermediate, right? And in order for this reaction to finish, we need bromide to come in and attack. And of course, this is the major reason why it goes anti-configuration and uh, there we go, right? The reason why this is much less likely is because this bromine is a very small amount and it, and it gets generated over time but there's very little of it at any given moment within our reaction flask. There will be even less bromide in here. And so when we form this, it will be difficult for this to come in and react. And so this is much less likely to continue on in the electrophilic um, substitution or addition. So it's difficult for this reagent, which is in a low concentration, to find that reagent in the solution. It's much easier for the radicals to find each other, and the radicals are more reactive. So that's why NBS will promote radical bromination rather than um, electrophilic addition, because we're generating very small amounts of bromine in the solution.